Hello! So today I thought I'd talk about my birth family search since I think it's been like four years since I've given an update, which I can't believe how fast time has gone by. A lot has kind of happened and then nothing really has happened, but we'll get into all that. But first, some shameless self-promotion. I'm now on TikTok and it's really fun. Go check me out on there for silly videos of my daughter and I. And of course, follow me on Instagram for style pics, pics of olive, daily stories. Okay, so since my last update, so much living has happened since then, like getting married, moving twice, starting a family. I actually just rewatched it and in that video I mentioned thinking about going to Korea in 2016. Well, that didn't happen. Instead, I got engaged, married, and pregnant all in 2016. Also at that time, I had just gotten the news from the adoption agency, the Korean one, Eastern Social Welfare Services. Now, whatever information I have on my paperwork about my birth family is incorrect. So. Even though I've been pretty distracted in the meantime with, you know, pregnancy, having a child, raising that child, keeping her alive, I have done some DNA kits. I really got turned on to it thanks to the really great Korean adoptee groups I'm in on Facebook. Through them, I was able to get a free family tree DNA kit. I started there and got a lot of third to sixth and greater cousins. Then during one of their sales, my husband and I both decided to do 23andMe. Again, no close matches. It was still neat for both of us to see our ethnic backgrounds and what percentage of what makes us. I'm big surprise, 99% East Asian, primarily Korean, a tiny bit Japanese. And then I downloaded my raw DNA data and have uploaded it to every possible site I can, I know of, GED match, my heritage, 325 camera. No close relatives, although during all this, I did have a second to fourth cousin pop up on my family tree DNA. They live in Europe, we've emailed a little bit, that's been cool. And I've connected with a couple other third to fifth cousins on social media, we're friends. I've connected with this guy who has the same birth date as me and we believe we were in the same orphanage possibly at the same time. We're not related though as far as we know. He's actually found some of his birth family which is really cool. And you know, I have to keep in mind that my birth date might not be my actual birth date. It could be correct, but it could also be off. All right, so after doing all this DNA stuff, and let's be honest, being disappointed, I am now doing more DNA stuff. This is actually some of my spit in here in a valve ready to be mailed off. So from everything I know, which I am not an expert and I don't know everything by any means, 23andMe and Ancestry have separate databases that are not shared. So while I've been able to upload my raw DNA to other sites who have that option available for free. Apparently 23 and Ancestry just don't let you do that with each other. So after following this process of testing with one and then taking the data and uploading it other places and not getting any close matches, if I still want to keep searching this way, I have to go back to square one with the other one I didn't test with, which was Ancestry, right here. As soon as I found that out and realized that if I have a close relative who's only done a kit through Ancestry, so the only way we'd match is if I also did Ancestry's kit, I went ahead and bought it. It arrived in just a few days and then it sat around for like a week. I'm busy, the days go by super fast taking care of my daughter and home and husband and self and working and trying to have friendships and outlets. My husband kept seeing the kit sitting there and was like, when are you gonna do it? It just didn't feel like something I needed to jump on and take care of immediately. But to be real real, I think I was putting it off because I'm a little nervous. I just don't wanna feel the disappointment again and again and again. <laughs> when searching for birth family through DNA testing, the advice is to have low expectations. The percentage of adoptees who find close family is very low. So you try to temper the excitement, but the whole process is is vulnerable. It's different than anything I've ever done before. It comes with very specific instructions and then you spit into a thing and you mail it away and you wait for weeks to get back information. Yeah, it's just not like a whatever mindless thing. Even deciding to do a kit and get it takes Thought. So when thinking about shipping this one off, probably tomorrow, there's a side of me that feels really negative. Like, it's gonna be another dud, you're not going to find anyone. But then there's the other side that's like, 
what if? You never know. I mean, it's just crazy to me to think that I will spend, could spend my whole life not finding any relative. I obviously have a biological mother and father. And let's just say the story on my adoption paperwork is true. Who knows? That they didn't stay together. Story goes, they met on a train, never got married. She got pregnant. He left. They were both poor, came from poor families. She wanted to give me a better life and that's why she gave me up for adoption. So with that in mind, what are the chances that neither my biological father or mother went on to have more kids? Even if just each of them had one more with someone else, that's two possible half siblings. Not to mention my biological parents have their own parents and possibly siblings. So that would be aunts and uncles. And maybe they had some kids, which means I have cousins that are closer than like third to fifth or sixth. That is one of the things that has fueled me to keep searching this way for now until I can actually go to Korea, which we're thinking will be in a few years because we want to take Olive. When the ancestry results come back, if there are no close matches, to Korea, we will go. I mean, I wanna go to Korea anyways. I'd like to see where I was born, but the biggest motivating factor for me is to search. And especially as I'm getting older, I think I'm feeling more pressure because that means my family members are getting older. I'd like to find people while they're still alive. And if I find someone, I'd like to have as much time with them as possible. And you know, I'd like to just not have this looming over me forever. If I never find birth family, there will always be question marks and maybe a desire, I wish I could. But if I at least do all the searching that I can, that I know of, at least there won't be those still opened next steps that I could be doing. I've contacted the adoption agency. I've done and I'm doing all the DNA databases I can here. And then next, go there. And then who knows, but maybe put some of this to bed. You know, it's strange to spend your whole life without someone but still long for them. And definitely having my daughter has given me stronger desire to search. And not just for like unanswered questions like her family tree on my side or our unknown medical history. But I carried her inside of me for almost nine months and then gave birth to her. And I can't imagine then giving her up. I know there's people who create life and bring life into this world and then do real bad by them. Neglect, abuse, they don't care. But I'd like to think, I guess, that someone cares. <laughs> that someone wonders about me. And I feel selfish saying that. But yeah, that is a part of this. One of the many reasons I want to search, and I won't speak for others, but when you're given up, I'd like to know that it wasn't easy to just be given away. Whew, I didn't mean for this to get sad or heavy, but let's be honest, it is a little sad and heavy for me sometimes. I know that no families are perfect. I know that I need to work on healing on my own and I'm working on it and I am not a stranger to counseling. And one of the things I'm learning is that as time goes on and I experience new and different things, sometimes new and different thoughts and emotions come along with it. self discoveries Having my daughter is one of the biggest life-changing things I've been through and naturally it has brought some stuff up about my adoption. And I'm processing it and I am sharing it with you. Thanks for listening and coming along on this journey with me. I will hopefully talk to you again soon and it will hopefully not be another four years before I give you an update about my search. Bye.